hey, I've got a book idea in my head and mapping out a table of contents with a book and just chapter by chapter and just letting it, hey, I've got some ideas and let it, letting it expand upon those ideas. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable what, what it can pump out. I mean, Ty, right. it's got all your ideas and uh, your information, all of this stuff in your head on paper and getting it, you know, and then using AI to just kind of grow it and expand upon it. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty incredible what, what AI can do. Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests, and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting, and here's the episode. All right, guys. Chris Cowley here today. I can't wait to dive into her world. We're going to talk about books. We're going to talk about raising a family, being an entrepreneur. How's it going? Awesome. Doing great. How are you? Good. You've helped 150,000 people launch a book, right? Yes. That well, is a we've lot. We've actually, well, through the whole marketing process, I and mean, we've been in it for 25 years now. So wow. we've helped over 150,000 people serving in the marketing and building a brand space. And um, in the past 10 years or so, more so publishing a book. Mm-hmm. So. And how have you seen the book space change in the last 25 years? I know audiobooks wow. are big now, right? Huge, huge. Absolutely. So when it started, you know, back in 2000-ish, you know, we were b- doing books on infomercials, mm. believe it or not, and selling a book on an infomercial and having a back-end, high-ticket offer at the back-end. So um, much, much different space. So that was pre-social media, pre-Amazon. Yeah. And of course, now there's all the things. But audiobooks now are definitely um, all the rage. You know, everyone's busy. Everything's buying for our time. Everybody's distracted. You know, it's it's easy to get distracted these days, right? Yep. So audiobooks are kind of like the number one thing. I caught the tail end of infomercials when I was a young lad, uh, oh, but now they're pretty much dead, right? Oh, it's totally dead. Yeah, it's a, it's a dead world. It's so different. Back then, it was a way to you know share your expertise, share your knowledge. Um, we were selling information products, and then on the back end of that had like live events and books yeah. and all the things, driving to a back end, coaching, consulting, yeah. software, things like that. So yeah, it's it's different world for sure. But you've done great at adapting. Not a lot of companies make it 25 years, right? And right. during the pandemic, if you were in the event space, you got crushed. And now with audiobooks, if you're not adapting to that, so you've done well at kind of pivoting. Absolutely. And now with AI, you know, that, that, that world, even audiobooks, things are changing mm-hmm. um, using AI for all sorts of things. And not so much AI to generate content. You know, no one wants to read a book that's generated by AI necessarily, yeah. um, but AI assisted for audiobooks and for physical books as well. So yeah. that's kind of cool. It's changing the game even again here in 2024. So it's exciting. I'm excited about AI. I actually use AI to summarize videos on YouTube if they're like an hour or two, mm-hmm. just because I don't have time to watch it all. Sure. And now you got me thinking I might even use it on some books. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, just even even just mapping out, like if you're thinking, hey, I've got a book idea in my head and mapping out a table of contents with a book and just chapter by chapter and just letting it, hey, I've got some ideas and let it, letting it expand upon those ideas. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable what, what it can pump out. I mean, it's possible to present, to do a whole book, but it's much more interesting. Obviously, if the book isn't just solely written by AI. Right. It's got all your ideas and Uh, your information, all of this stuff in your head on paper and getting it, you know, and then using AI to just kind of grow it and expand upon it. Yeah. Uh, It's pretty incredible what what AI can do. It is. Yeah. It won't replace the human aspect, like you're saying, like the emotional part, the storytelling, but all the logical stuff, the organization, it makes complete sense. Absolutely. And all the tactical and some of the best books have, um, it's a blend of tactical and the stories, you know, facts, tell, story, sell. People want the story, they engage, they relate. Um, But then the tactical piece of it, you know, makes it you know, more interesting or maybe a few little takeaways or golden nuggets, how to's, things like that. Yeah. So I want to talk about balancing the mom life. So how many kids you got? Three. Three kids. So a lot of people watching this are having kids or about to. Sure. What's some advice there on balancing the two things? Oh gosh. Um it's it's been a wild ride, right? So we've we've been at this for twenty five years. My kids are twenty three, twenty and fourteen. Damn, you had them so, young. Yeah, well well I'm fifty. Okay. I just turned fifty. Wow. So <laughs> you look good for fifty. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So it's 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 but it's been it's Honestly, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And now my kids, two of them are grown up and one of them is an entrepreneur. Another one's kind of like doing some entrepreneurial stuff. Nice. Um, so it's kind of cool to watch that and to see that. But um, I'd say the biggest thing, I mean, I've traveled a lot. I was speaking a lot, um, seminars, I mean, all sorts of things over the years. Mm-hmm. But I, I, when they were young, I took them with me. Mm. They w- went with me everywhere. So it was kind of a cool thing. We kind of traveled yeah. the whole homeschool thing and we you know, traveled all over the place doing live events and such, and it was it was great. Um, and now it's more, um, it's just balance. You know, I think balance is important. I think that's the biggest, probably the biggest challenge I faced, um, being a mom, being a business leader, mm-hmm. um, volunteering, doing the stuff I'm passionate about, you know, trying to try to juggle all of that. 
Um, but it's really cool. I think it's cool. Do you guys spend a lot of time or money or both on food, especially cooking and ordering delivery? Well, look no further than Factor, guys. Factor's got delicious, ready to eat meals that you could cook in just two minutes. They got over 35 different options to choose from every week. They got Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. They got what you need for your diet. They got over 60 add ons to help you stay fueled, and feeling good all day. What are you waiting for, guys? Get started and get after your goals. Restaurant quality food, guys. I've had quite a few meals. I've tried other meal prep companies. Factor is actually my favorite by far. The taste, the flavoring, the spices, all top quality. They got breakfast, they got midday bites, whatever you need. No prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. This is huge, guys, but you just throw it in the microwave for two minutes and you can eat right there. You can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. So it's the perfect solution if you're looking for something fast, something premium with no cooking required. They've also done the math. It's cheaper than takeout and it's dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash DSH50 for 50% off. DSH50 at factormeals.com slash DSH50. For your kids to be able to see like, Hey, you can have it all. You know, you can be a, you know, what kick button business and also, you know, have a family and have all the things and have a good life and travel and do all the things too. So that's huge. It's, uh, it's been cool. It's been cool to be able to, my kids to witness that. Yeah. Over and the you years. were homeschooling before it was normalized because this was 20 years, oh, 15, man, way, 20 years ago. Yeah. When, uh, well, my oldest was in kindergarten. So yeah, it was like maybe 2005. Yeah. Back then, you, <laughs> I remember you got bullied if you were homeschooled when I was growing up. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, and they, we were traveling a lot and doing live events. It was almost impossible to, I mean, we would have missed like every week we'd be missing days of school. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was just kind of cool to be on the road. And honestly, now, even today, I still I have one daughter who's in high school. I would, in a heartbeat, take her out of school mm. and go travel the world and go do the things, you know. Yeah, but, but she likes it. Yeah, they get kind of rooted and grounded with sports and school yeah. and all the things. So. Not so much, not that easy to do, um, you know, the whole homeschool or travel thing just yet. But but I'm still young. I have a long, <laughs> I, love I still that. have an opportunity to go out and, you know, travel and do things. And um, But it's great being a mom, being an entrepreneur um, and a high performance entrepreneur. You know, just I, I work a lot. Right. Uh, we work with a lot of cool people, do a lot of cool things. But um, it's been one of the biggest blessings of my whole 25 year career. So. Love that mindset because you grew up with a single mother, right? Yeah. So did you see a lot of work ethic from her? I did, I did, but not a lot of money. You know, mm. it's it's different now, t in, you know, in today's age because my parents worked hard, um, but they didn't have anything. You know, they didn't have a lot of money, so it was like you work really, really hard. It wasn't like a lack of effort, but still to be able to pour in forty to sixty hours and not still not have enough. Um, I think that's what drove me. Right. You know, as a as a young girl, I was like, this is not, this is great. I mean, I love my parents, but. I want a different life for myself. So yeah. I think that was where the the drive, the internal drive and the determination and all of those things come from. And, and as you know, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting. People will say, how are you so driven? Like, how do you, and it's not something that you create. I don't think you can just turn that on. I think there's experiences and things in our lives that, that shape, you know, who we are and where we've come from. And a lot of people who've made it big and make seven figures, eight figures, nine figures, they came from nothing, right? right. So you've kind of got this like internal know, hustle, grind, culture. <laughs> yeah, it's no, like similar for in. me. Similar for me. So both my parents were immigrants, worked nine to fives, mm -hmm. but that lifestyle was too slow for me. Even yeah, though they were agreed. able to save their way up and become millionaires over like 20, 30 year periods, mm -hmm. I want to enjoy wealth at a younger age. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Who wants to wait until you're you know, older and have health problems and can't travel and can't do all the things? Mm -hmm. I felt the same way. I was like, I wanted it. You know, I was, I was determined and at I mean, even before I got out of high school, I was like, I'm going to make a million before I'm 25. Wow. And that's um, a, back then, that's a lot. Because a million a lot today isn't, back then. isn't the same as yeah. it is. Yeah, it's different. We were, I remember in the infomercial days, we were selling high ticket, you know, $25,000 programs. And Damn, now back people, then? I know, sorry to say back then, that was like high, high ticket. Yeah, that's like 100K now. <laughs> <laughs> it was much, much, much different. We were, we were doing some pretty cool stuff. But that whole world of just what was possible, you know, once you get a little taste of it, it's like, wow. I can, you know, it's, 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 it, once you see it's possible and experience it, it's like, there's no stopping. Oh after yeah. That. When I made the switch to high ticket, which was probably last year, my life became so much easier because I was so focusing good. on volume for a lot of my first five years of entrepreneurship. Sure. Just like low ticket, but volume. Sure. And there's way more work. Oh, it's way more work. And, and sometimes it's not as enjoyable. No. Right. When you're doing high ticket and working with people who are doing some really cool things in the world, it becomes you know, it's just like, that's your circle. Those mm -hmm. are your peers and you're doing some cool things with cool people yep. uh, and making a lot of money at the same time. So it's it's great. You can have it all. You know, people say, oh, it's 
too hard. You can't have it all. I disagree. I disagree. You yeah. absolutely can't have it all. And at a young age, I think it's great that even like my daughter's 23, 20, I'm like, they're starting to experience it and get a good taste of it. And it's like, you know, and now of course I'm, I'm 50, but I started when I was like 25 and I'm like, man, if I knew now what I knew, when, like at 20, what, <laughs> what I know now. I think about that too sometimes. the world, right? But I think everything happens as is for Absolutely. a reason. Absolutely. You know? And no complaints. I mean, I still have great life ahead of me and lots of life left and um and we've you know i feel like we've kind of gotten it figured out but we're still always leaning into growth and doing new things and mm -hmm. developing new things and um just kind of rolling with the industry and trying to be at the forefront and cutting edge of the publishing industry which has been good i love that you never get too comfortable right because that's when never. people pass you never are you interested in coming on the digital social hour podcast as a guest we'll click the application link below in the description of this video we are always looking for cool stories cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life click the application link below and here's the episode guys never yeah. too comfortable always always innovating looking at the next thing what's next how can we be different how can we set ourselves apart how can we be better how can we help our clients better? How can we serve them better? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's the name of the game. That's cool. And you're also great at putting yourself in the right rooms. I want to talk about the networking side of things. You sure. built up a great mastermind. You've probably been part of other masterminds. How did you build that base? Um, well, in the beginning, it was speaking, believe it or not. So speaking on stages. Mm. Um, that's where I got a lot of my um, people would come up to me at the back of a room and, and ask about, do you have a mastermind or do you consult? or mm -hmm. do you, I remember the first time I got invited to speak, I was like, wow, that's kind of wild. They're asking me if I have like, book. back then it was like books and tapes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah. kind of like, what are they talking about? I had no idea. Like this whole world, this whole digital side of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the stages really got me, you know, that that's where I got, I think I got, got known and got to know other people. And then I joined other masterminds, um, some higher ticket masterminds right. and then starting my own mastermind. And, um, it's been great. It's been great. I mean, just, I feel like, I feel like in the everyday world, I mean, we're, we're serving really high level, high performance entrepreneurs, the books we're publishing and the people we're helping build brands are, are very, I mean, they're all experienced you know, very successful entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like with the mastermind, it's more like uh, kind of like those are my people. Like my, mm. if they become kind of like peers, right? They come to learn, they come to grow, they come to network. Um, but it's good for me too, because, you know, being in the digital space or, you know, the way things are here in 2024, it's just different. Like you could, you could never see a human and be really successful <laughs> working on a computer. And yeah, never, yeah, it's different. Never like see anyone face to face. So that's kind of like what feeds my, my soul. It makes me, you know, you, you get out and you meet people and you have people come in and you invite really cool people in that you want to meet. And, yep. you know, it's kind of like this, you know, you get to see cool people, interview cool people. You learn cool things every day. That's yeah. kind of what keeps it exciting. Otherwise I think it'd be kind of boring just agree sitting in a cubicle all day or sitting at home yeah. i could work from anywhere in the world but it would get boring if there were no face-to-face -face interaction with people so absolutely that's why people went crazy during the pandemic including myself because i couldn't handle those zoom calls after a certain point man right. i needed to see you face to face <laughs> like like this I'm like with you on that yeah i don't do podcasts virtually and i'm really strict on that i've yeah. had some huge guests try to come on the show and mm -hmm. want to do it virtually mm -hmm. and i said no yeah because it's not the same feeling it's not, no, this is, there's, you can't replace this, right? And that's what a mastermind brings. I, th I feel like that's what brings, it's just the people, the interaction, the, the energy, the vibe, all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all of those things. And um, because everything else can be, you can do business deals on the phone or whatever virtually, but, but it's just, you know, magic happens in a room. Absolutely. You know, with people and the right people and getting in the right rooms is important. So important. Changed my life. Yeah. My first mastermind I joined changed my life. I was the brokest kid in the room. Mm -hmm found a couple great mentors that took me under their wing and they brought me up to their level a few years later. Incredible, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the name of the game. Getting in the rooms and getting in the right rooms and investing that money. You know, people are always afraid to spend high amounts of money and they're like, what am I going to get from this and what kind of value am I going to get? But it's the best money spent because getting in the right rooms with the right people, um, it's it will change your life. Yeah. It does change your life. And you're, you're one of many. You know, you hear that a lot. People say that, but it's, um, yeah, it's, that's kind of my people side of the business, right? right. I and mean, we hear people's stories and interview people all the time and record books all the time. Um, but again, it's all done. It's not done in person. So yep. that's like the people side of the business that I, I absolutely love, even more so than speaking and traveling and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, going to a great mastermind three or four times a year, that's like, love it. can't wait. Yeah, you're paying for <laughs> access. That's what people need to shift their mindset. They're, they're expecting like an immediate ROI on yep. the money. Yep. And I think that's the wrong mindset. The ROI is going to be over time. Agreed. And just with, for everything, everything that you do in your life, everything that you're going to get, you're going to either pay with your time or you're going to pay with your money, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you time or money. So 
sure, you can waste, you know, take you t- yourself 10 years to figure something out that someone else did in one year and you could just join a mastermind and pay the same, probably half the money and get in with the right people and learn and get there faster. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's cool that you're so young and you get it. You know I get I mean? it. A lot of people don't get it. It takes no. them a while to figure that out. Yeah. It shouldn't be a tough sell. If you're paying for the right access, the right mastermind, it's a no brainer in my opinion. Agreed. I, I try to go to at least a few a year. Same, same. Um, but the thing is you need to provide value, right? So one Absolutely. of the things you provide is the book publishing. Mm-hmm. I know you can't disclose all the celebrities you worked with, but who are some notable people you've helped publish a book with? Sure, sure. So some of the people that we've worked with most recently, uh, and we've worked with a lot of people over the years, but um, we've worked with uh, Rudy Maurer, um, uh, Taylor Welch, mm-hmm. Krista Mayshore, uh, Ben Newman. Nice. Uh, Tarako Musa from Flipper Flop. Nice. Tom Reber from HGTV. So we've done a lot of different, um, it's all entrepreneurs, so we only publish nonfiction. Mm. And it's really, for most of these people, it's about building their brand, really. It's about building their brand, and the book is a piece of the puzzle. Right. They're using the book as a tool to leverage, to get on the right stages, to get in the right rooms. Um, I can't tell you the, the number of people that have said, oh, I want to get on this podcast, or I want to speak on this stage. And they have a hard time. They write a best-selling book. They write a little personal signed note inside the book, send it to the person. And mm. it's, it's, where it's, it's funny how the magic happens. It's wow. kind of grassroots old school. but No, um, it works. And it's our, so cheap, too. Yeah. The books are like five bucks. Yeah. You can just send out a hunter and... You know, you never yeah. know what'll happen. Absolutely, yeah, it's great. It's fun. It's it's fun to see. It's a it's a small piece of the puzzle, um, and people with them building their brand and building their back end and getting clients and getting exposure and visibility and authority and all of that. But uh, it's really cool because you meet some really great people who are uh, very heart centered and impact driven and doing cool things in the world. And um, a book is just a, a vehicle. I look at Alex Hormozzi and how many doors got opened up from his first book, Hundred Million Dollar Offers, and it's yes. just insane. I know Alex. Alex is a great guy, and, and it is insane. I mean, that book, this last book launched. Did you see the last Hundred Million book? Leads? Even crazier. Unbelievable! The number of people that came together for a book and rallied yeah. behind him just for a book. A book, right? yeah. It's In twenty twenty three, where like you think no one even reads books anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say those books. That that book. I I I would love to know the number of books that he sold. He actually disclosed it recently on a podcast i think he's selling might have been eighty thousand a month copies wow incredible it, he said it goes up every month right right well now it's so viral and everyone talks about it and and in the new book now you know what i mean and yeah i remember talking to him early on years ago about how he was going to do different different sets you know it's like a series of books mm-hmm. um, oh he told you yeah wow yeah 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 we we were talking and doing some that some stuff way back when and um i've known alex for quite a few years but yeah, he talked about kind of the, the game plan and what he wanted to do. Nice. And um, he's yeah. a man of action, man. A lot of people speak words, but they don't act on them. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's great. Incredible human, for Love sure. That. Impacted you, a lot of lives. Oh yeah, changed mine. I yeah. mean, hundred million offers. I I instantly implemented some of the things from that book and made direct money off that book. Yep. ROI. Yeah, that's direct why I like ROI. nonfiction. Yes. Yeah. Nonfiction is great. I mean, you're, it, it, honestly, it's that's what I love about it too. It's it's people that are changing people's lives with information. It's yeah. knowledge, expertise um, that they're sharing with the world. So it's like they're sharing their story and every entrepreneur has some really cool story. You mm-hmm. know, you, you kind of dig in. If you dig deep enough, it's like, wow, never knew that about that person. But then the tactical information they're sharing and their expertise and their knowledge and all the things, I mean, they're out there. Like we can only impact so many lives. We're, we're publishing about 100 to 120 books a month. Dang. Um, but think of all the people that those people impact. You know, each of those people have their own following. They have thousands of followers, sometimes millions of followers. So the people, the number of lives they're impacting, mm-hmm. it's like, wow, when you think about it, it's like, holy cow, that's- Millions, a, right? A lot of lives changed. Yeah, because one person has direct contact with maybe up to 100 people. So like you're Absolutely. impacting millions. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it's fun. so cool. It's a fun you, business. I saw you speak at Harvard and MIT. I did, and Stanford. That is crazy. So with an audience Last that year. young, what is the messaging centered around? Um, building a brand, you know, building a brand. And because a lot of these kids, you know, I, I also spoke at Cornell and it was interesting. The, these kids are, I mean, it's, it's, I feel like when I was in college, it wasn't as like entrepreneurship. I don't even think that was an option. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like I, it was looked I was, down on back then. Right. right? It was yeah, kind of yeah. like, oh, that's cute. You know, but <laughs> it, it wasn't like a real thing, right? You're not going to go off and be an entrepreneur. What are you going to do with that? That type of thing. They sort of like talked you out of that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but now it's more about, I mean, these kids are brilliant. 
there's so many tools and I feel like the digital thing, like back then it wasn't cool, mm -hmm. but this last year I've spoken, I've spoken at many universities, um, high level or, or, um, high level uh, universities, but most of the schools that we're speaking to were speaking to entrepreneurs too, like at Cornell, mm -hmm. they were all, the Dean of Entrepreneurship brought me in. So it was all entrepreneur types oh, that are people. That's cool. So there's like 300 kids who were just interested in building a brand. Right. And, um, Fascinating. I mean, they're brilliant kids, and the, and especially growing up now with AI and all the things that are coming out in the digital age. And I think people are starting to recognize more so, more now so than ever, that the you can make a ton of money and do big things in the world digitally. Yeah, you know what I mean, or just online or something that's related to online. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to like. You know, it doesn't have to be like a, a brick and mortar store or whatever. It, it can be, you know, online. But I think that a lot of them, they just had a lot of ideas. They were asking a lot of questions. Even now, they follow up with me a lot on LinkedIn. Nice. That's cool. Asking questions. And, um, yeah, it's just kind of cool to kind of light a little spark in their minds about what's possible out there. Yeah. I think right? when you're that age, you have so much energy. It's just a matter of directing it in the right ways. For sure. Because I look back at when I was working in college, I mean, I would work 18 hour days, but it, was, it wasn't on like things that would get me farther. It was more right. like short term, like right. let me make some money. Just let me get by, let me make some money this week or this yeah, month. Exactly. Right. So I think, yeah, having a mentor earlier on would have been game changer. Absolutely. Um, do you ever, have you ever heard of Peter Lowe? Do you remember the Peter, Peter Lowe, Lowe success tour, like the seminars and such? No. So yeah, super old school. I mean, I'm really dating myself now. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was like, maybe 23, 22, 23, I went to one of those events. And like, I mean, there were a ton of like big name people there. Mm -hmm. Trump was there, oh, Susie really? Orman was there, Damn. George Foreman was there, uh, Peter Lowe, yes. So these big stages and these tons of people, but it was that one event, like that first event like that, where there were probably 50,000 people in, the, in this arena. I was like, wow, this is interesting. Like all these people are making money and doing all these things. Mm -hmm. and. And I always thought, okay, if they could do it, I could do it. And that's kind of what sparked my, huh, I wonder if I could do something on my own or be my own boss and do my own, you know, because I was like, a, I was stay, staying at home. I was a stay-at-home mom right. you know, with a new baby. And I was like, what could I do? I don't want to drive to work two hours each way every day. What can I do different? How can I make money? What can I do? Um, and just, I think, having exposure to that. My parents didn't show me that stuff. I mm. found that. I don't even know how I found that, but mm -hmm. I found it. But I'm so grateful to this day because I know I'm exposing my kids. Like I take my kids to these cool events. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have said, oh, I, it's cool. I see you with your kids everywhere. I'm like, I love it. Well, they're adults. I mean, they're adults now. And um, But even their eyes, you know, the first time I took them to see Tony Robbins, they're kind of like, oh, my gosh. Like what's – it's just, it just, you know, it, it sets off something else in your brain that yeah. – a little bit not so traditional. Yeah, because right? you don't know what's out there. So I think you get so used to just your world in the moment sure. that you need to get exposed to people like Tony Robbins and other big influencers. Absolutely. And school and college, you know, I, I, I never heard anything about this kind of stuff when I was in college or in, or in high school. I mean, nobody ever, it wasn't a thing, right? And even right. now, I mean, my kids are in school and it's like they don't they don't teach you about entrepreneurship Definitely or not. This, this online world or what's possible. I remember my oldest daughter, when she was in college, she was in a marketing class and they didn't even mention social media the whole semester. What? And I'm like, how is that possible That's jokes. in 2020 that no one's talking about in my, a college, a college yeah. course? I went to, so I went to Rutgers in Jersey yeah. and I, I actually couldn't get in the business school because my GPA wow. was too low and I couldn't pass pre-calc. Wow. Second most failed class at Rutgers. So, but I could take this one marketing class and i still remember the professor you know he had 40 failed businesses or something wow something absurd and he was teaching and i'm just like why am i here <laughs> like i'm learning from this 70 year old guy that has failed businesses 40 and, failed businesses yeah he's just teaching a class and i'm like this isn't it man yeah it's not it well i and i remember she came home one day and she said is forty thousand dollars a lot of money and I was like, uh, no, it's not. Yeah. not. It's definitely not. But but she's like, well, that's what they're telling me I can make when I get out of college. I can make $40,000. Oh, my God. And that's right when COVID hit. And she came home. And um, the, long story short, but started a business. And her first month made $11,000 Wow. At, at 19. And she was like, I'm not going back. Yeah, 40 k these days, living off that, if you have a family. No way. This, it'd be really tough. No way. Yeah, living anywhere. Yeah. Right? We live in Texas even, but it's just not in... In California, definitely not. That's where we used to live, and now I'm in Texas. But even that, that's not. I mean, considering, I mean, when she made eleven thousand in one month, mm -hmm. her brain was like, okay, yeah. What's now that's possible? the new normal, right? Right. But now that's her baseline. It's all about leveling up your baseline. Well, that's just it. So you get exposed to that, and then you're like, 
oh gosh, what, you know, if, if that, wow, if this 19 year old kid could do it, maybe I could do it. Or she's like seeing me do it every day. And she's like, well, if you can make this much in one day or this much in one week, but you know, because there's so many, the, the traditional job world, you know, it's like, it's not that exciting for in a lot of, you know, there's not that many industries, unless it's something you just really want to do. Like you grow up and you say, I really want to do yeah. this for a living. But um, 80, 20 economically, rule, right? I mean, 20% yes. of people enjoy it. I'd say 80%. Most people do not enjoy the nine to five lifestyle. No. And even if they think they do, they get into it and it's like, okay, it's not as exciting as I want. I feel yeah. underpaid, overwhelmed. So it's cool to expose, be exposed, mm -hmm. or expose people to things that are could change their lives. Absolutely. You know? Cali to Texas. Wow. That's a big change. So walk me through what was going on during that time. Yeah. Just to be with family. You know, I, I was, I was having my third child mm -hmm. and I wanted to be in your family. So, um, California is great. I mean, it was great at the time, you know, this was, gosh, we moved 15 years ago. I spent most right. of my adult life there yeah. though. So that was peak Cali. Now but, it's not the same. Right. It's not, it's <laughs> so much different and you know, and it wasn't conducive to business. Right. You know, I had a business, a very successful business and the, the taxes, oh, just everything. 15%. I mean, just everything was just brutal. And so Texas, we're like, oh, no state income tax and yep. all the things. And there's just, it's just, um, it's a little bit different, a little more conducive to owning your own business. I had family, mm -hmm. I had support. You know, I was traveling a lot still yet. I still travel, but now it's more, um, like you said, like the masterminds or for travel things I want to do. I don't travel just to, I was, I'm not on the road every week like right. I used to be. So back then I needed more support. I needed family. I didn't want my kiddos to be raised by nanny. So, mm. you know, I wanted them around family and people, yeah. you know, that loved them. So um, it was a good move. Nice. It was a really good move. Was the husband also entrepreneur? Um, no, he was a sportscaster. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was Fox Sports, um, ABC, did all these different, Damn, had his own football show. Um, had a lot of cool stuff that he was doing, and he retired um, to spend more time with our kids. Nice. Yeah, to That's spend cool. more time. It was really fun. We had a lot of cool, you know, somebody on the plane today was talking to me about um, Super Bowl and going to the World Series, all these things. I was like, yeah, we did some really cool stuff like yeah. that. You know, for many, many years with this job. That's and, a cool um, way to raise kids because one has the nine to five corporate lifestyle and you have the entrepreneurship. So you provide both perspectives. Absolutely. And you know, and I'm not going to lie, him having a job that was like very making a great amount of money mm -hmm. when I started was like a cushion. Right. So I could I could go out there and fail and it would be okay. And mm. we could still pay our mortgage, pay our bills, but it was like a safety net. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and that's important to establish. Very much so. So I feel like a lot of people are risk adverse because of that. They feel like, well, what happens if I fail? Well, what if you fail, you get back up, you do you do something else or you do it again or whatever. But I still had the the income wasn't like, oh gosh, what's gonna happen if I if I fail? Yeah. And then we started to do really well and eventually he was like, I'm gonna retire. Mm. Which was great. And I now we that. travel and raise our kids and do cool things and have cool experiences and it's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So he retired pretty young, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's been gosh, it's been Sixteen years, maybe. So, yeah. Damn, and he like, didn't have an itch to work at all. Um. Well, yeah, he does now. I mean, we have our companies. You know, uh -huh. we have a couple of companies: a software company, a publishing company, and so he does a lot of the operations type stuff. Oh, but, nice. Um, but coming from being a sportscaster to that, it's it's totally different. Yeah. You know, and, and for someone that used to getting paid every Friday, every two weeks or whatever, coming to that world was a little scary for him. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's just continued to grow and flourish and. We've built our brand and our business, and it's it's been really good. I've been really really blessed, really grateful, um, but I also work really hard. I yeah. worked really hard to get here. So yeah, incorporating family into business. Let's talk about that because that could go either way. Sounds like sure. you guys are killing it. I'm killing it with mine as yeah. well. Yeah, but a lot of people I talk to, there's there's some issues. For sure. Yeah, my I have both of my older girls involved in our business. Um, my sister. So I've, I've, I've hired, yeah, I've hired some different people, um, some friends and friends and their, their kiddos. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's, it is a little bit tricky um, because I'm, I'm high performance. I'm, I, I demand a lot. I, I, I have to have a more go. Publishing is a very deadline driven business. Right. So we're always like, gotta go, gotta go. We have a deadline, deadline, a launch date, all these things. So it's kind of tough because I'm like high energy and you know, always kind of like going 200 miles an hour. And what I've realized as I've gotten older, not everybody's like that, mm. right? I'm very like driven and got to go and we have to do this, 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 this. And I go and I multitask, I do a hundred things at a time and not everybody's like that. So yeah. sometimes my expectations, I feel like I need to kind of rein myself in. Yeah. <laughs> and like, this is not the norm necessarily, but we Similar. set really high standards for yep. ourselves and, and me, I have very high standards. So I'm like, Similar problem yeah. with me. So when I work with friends, it usually doesn't work out. And now I'm very 
picky if I want to work with a friend because I know it might impact that friendship. Yes. So I try to have it the other way around where we become friends after some business success. Yeah. I feel like it's easier that yeah, way. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it is tough because it's like you're not always um, – it's not that you're not always on your best, but you're like you're not showing your best. But it is tough because if someone doesn't have a lot of energy, or they're being lazy, or they're being whatever, or they just don't care as much as you care. It's tough. Yeah. It's hard. It's your business. It's like your baby. Absolutely. So yeah, it's 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 one of those things. I mean, it's I kind of handle it with you know kid gloves, white gloves. I'm just very like okay, just it's a delicate. It's game. a very delicate uh, line to kind of you know to juggle and to balance for yeah. sure. What are you focusing on this year? Anything exciting that you're working on? Yeah, we're um, doing a publish something called Publish.ai software, mm -hmm. new software to develop develop content. So we started off as publishing, saying, "Hey, it'd be cool to be able to leverage AI to help publish books." Not again, not AI generated content, but AI assisted content. Mm. Um, and then it kind of grew into, you know, a lot of our authors are doing their press releases and they're doing articles and they're doing books and they're doing social media content. So we actually are. Uh, in the process of building out our own language model, um, but at the at the time when we launch, it'll be, you know, powered by, of course, using ChatGPT. But we've built out. We've got some great prompt engineers from Google nice. that helped us with this. Um, they've been in the prompt engineering world for ten years now. Wow! And a lot of people think, oh, well, ChatGPT just came out or AI, but AI has been around for. Quite some time. I've actually. heard that. I've heard yeah. 20, 25 years. A lot. Well, think about all the Alexa and all the things you know in your house. All the things. That's all. That's all AI driven yep. stuff. So you know, it's been around for a bit. But yeah, we're just building the software um, more for a continuity base. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have a continuity. Uh, we've got the high ticket. Uh, we have the masterminds. But this is. It's kind of cool to build something. Um, I've built a couple softwares before, so yeah. it's fun. It's a fun project, and uh, Love that. AI is kind of at the forefront of everything now, right? Even for videos, and mm -hmm. you know, you see people creating courses with AI, and it's not even there. It looks like them, sounds like them, but it's not them. I'm like, gosh, I've seen that. Yeah, the virtual avatars. It's scary. It's it is kind of scary. Scary, but exciting. Yeah. And I and I I'm, I'm glad to hear someone your age say that because me being 50, I'm like, it scares me, but I'm like. It is a little different. It's different. Because right? anybody can make a video with somebody with you saying anything, and it's like, that's not me. Exactly. That's why I'm personally scared because people with a following it could be easily manipulated. Fake Agreed. videos, deep Agreed. fakes. Agreed. Influencers, and absolutely. Yeah. I saw some things. I've seen some images and some videos online where I'm like, wow, it, that looks very real. I get ads for Joe Rogan like promoting products, but it's not even him. But it looks very much so. Yeah. Or it sounds, and even your voice, like you sounds can, just like him. Yeah, like with audiobooks, we had a gal the other day that submitted an audiobook, and she had recorded three minutes of her voice mm -hmm. with this software. Yeah, and that the software recorded the whole audiobook. No way. With like in voice inflection. I mean, it was that's crazy. It was really hard to detect. Wow. So it's really it's kind of crazy. What's it's <laughs> coming, guys? What's coming. Stay tuned, yeah, it's Chris. Not going anywhere. It's been fun. Where can people find you? Uh, GameChangerPublishing.com. Or Instagram, official Chris Colley, Facebook, official Chris Colley, LinkedIn. We're all over the social channels. Um, not as much on TikTok yet. We're there, but don't have as much of a presence. We gotta get you Most on. Most of our following comes from Instagram and LinkedIn. And um, but yeah, gamechangerpublishing.com as well. And, Love uh, it. We'll link it in the video. Thanks so much for coming awesome. on. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Appreciate thanks for watching, guys. As always, see you tomorrow.